Hello, welcome to the University of Stirling. Uh, my name is Jane Cameron, I'm the curator of the university's art collection. I'm standing this morning in front of the Pathfoot building, which is uh, the first building that was established on campus in 1967. It's a really fine example of modernist architecture. Um, it has flat roof, single storey, it banks and tiers up the hill behind, and there are wonderful white walls where we can display uh, our art collection. The art collection was established in 1967 by our first principal, Tom Cottrell, who felt that art should be part of the everyday experience for students and staff and visitors. So the walls were littered with fine works of art and you'll be able to see some of them on our website. This short film is to tell you a little bit more about the art collection and how we use it and what we do and how the landscape inspires our journey. In the art collection, we're really interested in how to make the art accessible to everybody. And we do that through a programme of events and exhibitions, and we aim to make knowledge visible. By that, what we try and do is to work with academics in the university and then explore the themes of their research through exhibitions, through events and through outreach. We're really fascinated by the idea of the campus as inspiration. We like to think of the campus itself as a piece of artwork. It is beautiful and anyone who's been here will know that. And then within the, within the campus we've got the iconic Pathfoot building and then within the Pathfoot building we've got the art itself. So we're going to explore different ways to interpret the art through music, through dance and through nature itself, through actually wandering around the campus and seeing what strikes us and what we're inspired by. I'm standing here beside the, the, the man-made loch on the campus. It was man-made in the 1700s um, and the owners of the estate at the time, the Haldane family, had commissioned Thomas White, who was a landscape architect and a pupil of Capability Brown. So the current ambition of the art collection and the, and the Gardens and Grounds team is that the landscape becomes part of the art and it follows this, this, this sense of the simplicity of the land and the building, so the buildings sit like sculpture in the landscape and there's simple parkland vistas. So the university's only been here for 50 years, so in terms of the, the, the age of this landscape, this ancient landscape, it's a very short period of time. And in that time we've done um, quite a lot of, of work on the, on the grounds to create a university. Um, one of the things that I love the best about the architecture uh, and the buildings on campus is the bridge. The bridge that connects the residences, the student residences, to the teaching buildings and the cultural centre on the other side. This wonderful, simple bridge was designed by John Richards at the time and there was a bit of a, a struggle over it because it is so simple and so straightforward. But it just drives a line right across the water from one side to the other, so I just love it. Well, welcome to the Crash Hall. This is the main gallery space in the Pathfield building. Um, I'm going to say a little bit about the programme of exhibition and events that the Art Collection are holding this year until September 2022. Each year, we, um, our exhibitions and events are inspired by research at the university. Last year, our theme was environment, and this year, quite aptly with recent events, our theme is health and well-being under the umbrella title the art of well-being. So in each of the galleries we've got artworks from the permanent collection or artworks that are on loan exhibited around this theme. In gallery one we've got work by the artist Chiara Phillips and we were really lucky to get funding from the National Fund for Acquisitions and Art Fund to fund this purchase in the last year. We've also got a series of works um, from Dundee Contemporary Arts Edition series which are 10 artists who responded to um, uh, lockdown and produced work so we've collected those prints again with the support from the National Fund for Acquisitions. 
Here in the Crush Hall, we've got an exhibition blue, which is a work from the permanent collection. And in galleries two and three, working with academics, we've got an, an exhibition called Second Chances, which is centered around um, experiences of community justice in Scotland. And we're working with colleagues in criminology to tie that into learning and teaching and to host a series of, of outreach events related to that. We're also exhibiting work by Joan Erdley, which would be her centenary year this year. So there's a lot of, of exhibitions going on throughout the building and each of those will be tied into events and outreach and activities to get the community engaged in the theme of health and well-being. We're also ongoing programs such as our gardening club, which is working with students um, to try and make them feel included and to dissipate any sort of form of social isolation once they're back on campus. The curators have chosen blue as the theme to celebrate our health and wellbeing theme exhibitions this year. We chose blue because of its use in, in music and in art, you know, in music, the blues is, is always played in a minor key. Um, and, and artists use blue to emphasize shadow, um, depth, um, and sometimes, you know, to, to describe sadness. If you think about Picasso and his blue period, it was his blue period, he, these paintings were made during a period of, of his depression. But um, blue um, also is a powerful, positive emotion. Um, it's calming, it's spiritual, uh, it's meditative, and it's healing, um, and can be restorative. So these examples of these works on the wall in this exhibition um, give you a chance to see how all these different arts, artists have used blue and experience each work um, for, its, for its emotional um, quality and, its, and its, hopefully its healing quality. Um, as curators of the University of Stirling Collection, we like to acquire work which reflects the practices of the artists that are working today, but also reflects contemporary society. And this is building our culture on campus, it's building the, 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 the cultural offer uh, for staff and students who visit us. We um, were fortunate during lockdown to acquire 10 works by artists from all over Scotland they were commissioned by Dundee Contemporary Arts to uh, create works which were printed in uh, the print studio at Dun in Dundee. Um, and these are artists that we've long wanted to acquire, some of them we've long wanted to acquire, like Martin Boyce, Toby Patterson, Christine Borland, E. Fowler. This uh, collection of, of works um, reflects the work that these artists have been doing um, around COVID and during the COVID pandemic. And as part of uh, our Culture on Campus umbrella, the university, together with the university archivists, are collecting um, stories and oral histories from people's experiences of the pandemic. So not only are we collecting contemporary art, but we're collecting archive material. Kira Phillips is an artist that we've long wanted to acquire for the collection. She was nominated for the Turner Prize in 2014 and her work explores current and social and political themes. So I visited her studio and we looked at her prints that were laid out in, in Glasgow in the print studio there and selected these two works, these two hands, beautifully printed. We were fortunate to acquire them because we received matched funding from the Art Fund and from the National Fund for Acquisitions. So we received them um, during the pandemic. They arrived and we had them framed and they're now on the walls. We didn't realise at the time that we selected these works that the hands would be a kind of metaphor for the pandemic. You know, the hands are about contamination for us all washing our hands, but also about comfort. We're very pleased to have these works um, as part of our Art of Wellbeing exhibitions this year. Um, e every year our exhibition theme is taken from the research topics at the university and this year uh, the, the topic is health and well-being. So K Kira's work will feature, I'm sure, as uh, in workshops um, and events uh, during the course of the 2021-2022 academic year. 
Alongside our programme of exhibitions, we also run an active schedule of public engagement and outreach activities. These are specifically designed to get different communities from staff, students to the wider art community to engage with our exhibitions and the research themes that inspire them. This year in our kind of year of health of well-being under the umbrella title The Art of Wellbeing, we've got various events scheduled. Um, working with uh, Community Justice Scotland, we're doing a series of lectures, workshops and events inspired by the Second Chances exhibition which looks at experiences of community justice in Scotland. Around health and well-being we're really actively already engaged with staff and students promoting well-being on campus. For the last couple of years we've had a Pathfoot gardening group with um, students and staff referred informally from student support services should they need, need some sort of help or support with their mental health and well-being. Um, we're joining that with a programme of forest bathing, nature trails, sculpture walks and other workshops designed to get staff students in the local community to look at the campus, the beauty of it and to be inspired by it and to let it help their health and well-being. Another thing that we've just been involved in which has been wonderful has been working with um, dancer Grace Turner from Turnaround Dance and she's um, created the Air 3 Dance Trail which is inspired by the beautiful campus and she's created six individual dance pieces inspired by different locations on campus and you can go online and look at those and, and follow the trail on campus. <laughs>